What's up guys? So today I want to talk about efficiency and clear speed and how these things are related. And so I just want to note that this isn't the only way to approach this game or necessarily even the best way to approach the game. It's just one way out of many. So the idea behind efficiency is over a long period of time, what is going to give you the most results? You don't look at it from a run by run basis because every run is different, but the idea is to say, okay, over a period of let's say 100 hours, how many runs did I do and how many of those runs were successful? So efficiency is what is the best choice on average, not necessarily what is the best choice for this run. The idea is to create a feedback loop, and there's lots of feedback loops in the world, and so we want to create a feedback loop where doing well leads to doing well leads to doing well. If you're struggling and having a hard time, that's going to lead to doing poorly, which is going to lead to doing more poorly, which is going to lead to doing even more poorly. And this is really what attrition is. Attrition is a feedback loop where making mistakes leads to more mistakes, leads to more mistakes, leads to more mistakes, and eventually leads to failure. When we talk about efficiency, we kind of want the opposite of attrition. In the majority of white it's not one big error as much as it's a series of smaller errors that led up to the team not being able to respond appropriately to a difficulty spike. Which brings us to our first principle. If we want to avoid wiping to a difficulty spike, the best thing to do is to simply prevent difficulty spikes from happening in the first place. If we spend less time in the map, we will face fewer hordes and specials, and the probability of facing difficulty spikes goes down. Now there will still be some difficulty spikes in every level, but on average, over a long period of time, the number of difficulty spikes will drop, and therefore the number of games that we fail due to them will also drop. In addition, by eliminating unnecessary difficulty spikes, we ensure that when the unavoidable ones come, our team will have the resources necessary to rise to the occasion and to not fail. So how do we achieve all this? Well, the first principle is we go fast. Now, as soon as I say speed, a lot of people tend to think about, you know, that time when your level 30 elf heard a sack rat and just ran away from the rest of the team chasing some sack rat that they could never catch, and then they die alone, and then they flame the team, and they lose the grim, and then they disconnect from the game. That's not the kind of speed that I'm talking about here. I'm talking about moving through the map with purpose and intentionality. Every action you do should directly correlate to you completing this map. Going fast helps you survive more, because it helps you dictate the engagements. You have a few seconds to choose where you want to fight the horde. A lot of times teams that are going slow end up being forced into positions that they never would have chosen in the first place. And sometimes you might want to run past a couple rats in order to get to a better, stronger position to fight rather than being forced into an unfavorable position. Another thing is speed simply reduces attrition. The longer you're in the map, the more specials will spawn, the more hordes will spawn, the more rats you will fight, and the more damage you will take. So you want to be in the map for as little time as possible so that you take less damage, and taking less damage will lead to a higher completion rate. Another reason to try to go fast is, is when you have health negative players on your team. By health negative, I mean that players that on average lose health in every engagement. For health negative players, either they will complete the map before they run out of health packs, or they will run out of health packs and they will die. If players are struggling, increasing the pace of combat is probably only going to make the problem worse. Instead, what you want to do is cut whatever corners you can. So skip item spawns and take shortcuts. And there's no shame in being a health negative player. That just means that they're playing at their challenge level. Another reason to try to go fast is to farm. If you're playing for loot, if you're playing for reds or oranges or blues or whatever, you want to roll the dice as many times as possible. So you need to go fast to get as many completions under your belt as you can. And the third reason to go fast is morale. Everybody likes to win. And so it's important that people feel like they're progressing through the map and they feel like they're not bogged down. Tilting can make a big difference in this game because every engagement is so critical. And when you're playing with pubs, you need to be able to judge the limits of your team. And this is kind of a nebulous thing, but to look at your team and kind of evaluate how, how they're doing. You know, can you manage to go faster or do you need to slow down for some players? Because stress makes bad players worse. And so if a player is struggling on your team and you constantly keep going faster than them, they're going to have a bad time, they're going to start tilting, and then they're going to take even more damage and they're going to play even more poorly. While going fast is the best choice on average, in some situations you will need to slow down. And this is a judgment call that you're going to have to make, but your default setting should be to try to go quickly, because winning is good for morale. 
And this brings us to tactics. How do you make these choices that will help you complete maps quicker and more consistently? So everything that's not directly related to winning the level can be cut. A lot of players like to look around for items in side rooms. All you need to do is just keep moving forward because there will be health and there will be potions and bombs and etc in the main path that you're going to take anyway. You don't need to set aside time to go look for items. Another thing that can be cut is fighting trash. Fighting trash costs you time and health. If a rat isn't standing directly in front of you blocking you from progressing through the level, there's no reason to aggro that rat. I know we all signed up for fighting rats, but a little bit of intentionality can go a long way. Some players Players like to micromanage health and make sure they are at absolutely tip top health all the time at every health checkpoint and they'll use two med packs instead of one and there's really no reason to do that. Your health is naturally going to fluctuate as you take a random hit here and as you get a random bloodlust proc there. So don't sweat the little stuff. Just because a health pack is there, it doesn't mean that you absolutely must use it. Patrols are another time sink. If you respawn quickly, in most patrol spawns you can advance forward and skip the patrol early. Whereas if you respawn slowly, you have to backtrack and then you have to make up the lost ground and you may have to hold out in a very undesirable position all the while increasing your risk to hordes and specials and the risk that one stray shot might aggro the patrol and you might wipe. Whereas if you were just a couple seconds faster, you could have skipped this situation entirely. Some players really like to hold out during hordes and things like that. Oftentimes you really don't need to, especially if the horde is coming along a funnel, you can just advance into the horde. You don't need to huddle up and hold out every time. Another thing is to enter events quickly. Most barrel events suspend the regular timer that hordes and specials are on. Players will fight a horde right before they enter an event and then they will go down and do the event. Whereas if they would have been 10 seconds quicker, they could have avoided that horde at the beginning of the event and that would have saved them 30 seconds on their map time and it could have saved them any damage that they took prior to entering a difficult event. So these are just some tactics and some considerations I employ to help me complete maps quicker and more consistently. The main idea is you want to skip time consuming things because time equals health equals consistency. For everything you do, think about why you're doing it. If there's not a reason, if doing this thing doesn't equate to me completing the level, then there's no reason for me to do the thing. I try to get through levels as quickly as I can. I don't loiter and I lead from the front. 